our space. Now, that may be good for listening comprehension, so you can say, okay, that's okay. But on the other hand, why is now the teacher, she's some or he's somehow special, that the teacher can go away feeling, well, I finally told them something about the target culture. Isn't that fine? Now my students know about the target culture. Or should instead the teacher go away from that classroom knowing a little bit more about Korean culture that, that was learned in English rather than the students going away learning more about garage sales? Well, it, it isn't simple black and white. It very much depends on exactly what happens in that classroom. And that's going to be very much what you do as you make moment by moment decisions as to how you deal with garage sales. Now, the other thing that you could have is you could have a textbook that has largely um, topics from Korea, the source culture. So you could have um, Korean um, sports heroes, you could have Korean theater, you could have Korean economic issues, and the teacher and the students are all speaking Korean. Now, many people say, well, we don't want to have that because it's not motivating. Students already know about that. Why do they have to know that? Well, I think there's two things. That it may be that students really don't know that much about their own culture. That maybe that for many young people, the global culture has become so much a part of their lives that they don't know a lot about the local culture. So it's an opportunity to learn more about that. The other thing is that even if they do know about it in Korean, they may not know how to express it in the words they would need in English. And so if you then have it in English, you've provided them with the words and the things that they can use to tell other people about Korea. So I think there are many reasons for doing that. Now at the bottom then, you have this idea of the Korean culture, and you have a, stu a teacher that's from somewhere outside of the United States, or somewhere like the United States, and then you have the source culture. So what may happen there is could be something pretty healthy. That what happens is, is the teacher says, oh, I don't know about that kind of Korean theater. Can you tell me about it? And so what the student has to do is use the English that they have in order to tell that teacher that this is what we do here. So you set up a different set of, of dynamics because now the student is doing the talking in English and the teacher is the one who doesn't know as much. And then it isn't any more target or source. It's just people using English to tell about their local culture. Um, let me see, do we want to put up the overhead? If you're okay. If you just take, um, if you don't mind waiting for just a minute here, um, I had two things I wanted to add, and I have them on overheads, and I don't have them on the PowerPoint. And I'll try to do this fairly quickly because I know we're, we're running out of time. Okay. You can just simply count, they look at the kinds of characters that my tech with students did when I was teaching in Japan. And what she did was she looked at all the ministry approved textbooks for high schools and she just looked at the characters that were in the textbook. And so she looked at all the non-Japanese characters that were in the textbook. And as you'll see from this that the inner circle, the target, that there were 25 people. The other ones were nine, only nine people. So in a very subtle way, what the textbook was saying was that if you're going to use English, you're going to be using it to speak to people of the inner circle. Most of the dialogues were, I'm speaking with someone from the inner circle. That seems to me not at all what we want our textbooks to do, because the fact of the matter is, more and more today, it won't be bilingual speakers of English speaking with inner circle people, but it will be bilingual speakers of English speaking with other bilingual speakers of English. What we need far more in our materials is we need to have a Korean using English speaking to a Chinese using English. We need to have more of those kinds of dialogues so we can say, all right, 
We're using English. Both of us speak English pretty well, but we, it isn't our first language, so we may not know every word and we may have a little problems here and there. How are we going to communicate with one another? And that's the way English is going to be used more and more today. And what we need to do is help students to know how to understand one another. So if they don't understand someone, a Chinese who's speaking English, they would say things like, I'm sorry, could you say that in a different way? Or I'm sorry, could you say that again? Or some way of trying to figure out what each person is saying. Instead, in our, our, our um, books, we have it always that there's people who speak perfectly. And they never make errors and they never have problems. And that isn't what really happens outside the classroom. So one thing to do is to be, not only in your textbooks, but in the things you do in your own classroom, figure out what do I want to show my students? Where are they going to be using English? Not only, and that's spoken English, but I think we also need to think far more about what skills are we teaching? That there's currently a great emphasis on speaking and listening. But I think for many Koreans and for many people in many countries, it's not really speaking and listening that they're going to be mainly using English for. It's that they're going to be reading and they're going to be listening. And they're going to be reading things in their profession, they're going to be reading websites, and they need to be able to read and read well. And so perhaps we should be doing far more in our language classrooms of reading and, and put less emphasis on speaking and listening. I mean, obviously, eventually you want everyone to be able to deal with all four skills. But where do you start and what do you put your main emphasis on? And so this is something that needs to be rethought. And it need, people who, the, the people who make that decision are people like you who know the goals of your students and you know their level of proficiency. You need to decide what are going to be my own goals. Now, there's another way in which culture plays uh, a role in materials, and this is a little bit, it's far more subtle, and perhaps in some ways a little bit more dangerous in any way. Okay, this is, um, when I was um, teaching English in Morocco, um, I looked at some of the ministry-approved textbooks, and I had understood from many people in the ministry that Moroccans want to learn English, but they definitely don't want to learn about American culture or Western culture. That they feel this is the language, we need this language for many reasons, we don't want Western culture. So I was very surprised when in the ministry approved textbook, I saw this dialogue or this little reading. And it talks about, um, the, uh, a Western family. He's here as an engineer. He's working in Morocco, and it talks about the role of the men and the men and women. So, this is what Steve does. Um, after work, Steve comes back from back home. He likes to be with his family in the evening. Usually, he or Nancy, his daughter, cooks dinner for the family. Then they wash the plates. Barbara just likes to eat. She doesn't like to cook in the kitchen. She thinks it takes a lot of time and it isn't interesting. Steve never criticizes her. Do you think he's right? <laughs> now, it's a really fascinating dialogue because, first of all, there's this idea of the men doing domestic work, which would be very unusual in a Moroccan cultural context. And not only that, but instead of just sort of slipping it in and just kind of, then you have follow it up with some questions like, what does Steve do when he comes back home? And then the students answer, and then you don't deal at all with the culture. But it actually asks people to talk about it. So it's raising the whole idea of gender. But it's in a way showing that idea that, well, men are in the kitchen doing this. And almost like, well, you know, that's the way they do it in target culture. That's the way they do it maybe in inner circle. And by the way, I just want to let you know that there are many, many men in the United States who never enter a kitchen and would never cook. So to say, oh, that's the way they always do it in the inner circle, that isn't right either.
but it is kind of looking